This is Happy Half Hour, a Peoria <laughs> Life web show Psych. brought to you by Enjoy Peoria. Hello and welcome to Happy Half Hour. On this week's show, we sit down with Hornbaker Gardens out of Princeton and learn what if they're ready for all of those May flowers. Later, we're going to head out to the Bearded Owl to talk about the craft beer craze that's taken over the Peoria area. We'll also fill your free time with some great events we have coming up this weekend. So sit back, relax, and have some fun with us here on Happy Half Hour. Let the good times roll at the third annual Mardi Gras and May Street Festival. Brought to you by Enjoy Peoria, Saturday, May 12th. Water Street turns into Bourbon Street with live music, amazing Cajun food and drinks, street performers, artists, and much more. You won't want to miss this free, one-of-a-kind event. Interested? Head on over to the Mardi Gras May Street Festival Facebook page to learn more. Welcome back to Happy Half Hour. You all know the phrase, April showers bring May flowers. Well, now those flowers are starting to bloom and you have to go check out one of the prettiest places in the spring, Hornbaker Gardens, just north of us in Princeton. Joining us to talk more about Hornbaker is owner Rich Hornbaker. Rich, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me here. So first tell us, what is Hornbaker Gardens? Hornbaker Gardens is a garden center, um, botanical gardens and arboretum all rolled into one. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the history? We started, uh, this is our th 32nd year in business. We started in 1987. Uh, my late wife Kathy and I had bought the property some 40 years ago, a perfect uh, hidden off the beaten, trath, beaten path place to uh, build a house and raise a family, which we did. We started a family. And uh, as soon as we bought the property, I started thinking, what can I do to make a living out here? I was practicing law. My wife was a, a teacher. And uh, I it took a few years to figure it yeah. out, but in 1986, I attended the uh, fourth annual symposium of the Perennial Plant Association, a new organization. This was out in uh, Columbus, Ohio. I spent a week out there learning about perennials, touring gardens, touring nurseries, came back all enthusiastic yeah. about uh, perennials, and in, in particular, a plant called a hosta, which back then hardly anybody knew anything about hostas. And uh, we, I gave up the law practice and we jumped right into uh, to Hornbaker Gardens at that point. Awesome, what a great change of pace, I can imagine. It was. We started, uh, started out thinking that we would be strictly wholesale. Mm -hmm. Like I say, we're off the beaten track. Yeah. Who would ever find us at this location if we were trying to do retail? But uh, the second year in business, we held an open house to let people in Princeton come out and see what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And we had quite a, reaction. A lot of people came out and we really enjoyed educating people about plants, educating people about hostas in particular. And uh, in a short few years, we were open seven days a week. So wow. uh, we stayed with the wholesale end of things for only about five years. And ever since then, we've been strictly uh, a retail destination garden center. That's awesome. So you're, you are a retail garden center. What are the other things you can buy outside of, you know, your, your hostas and your plants and that sort of thing? Well, we carry just about every kind of plant that you can think of. Yeah. Um, a really good selection of trees and shrubs, including some unusual dwarf conifers, things like that. Um, aquatic plants, grasses, all kinds of perennials and annuals. And then we also carry um, a lot of garden decor uh, a huge selection of pottery. Um, we get a semi load of pottery in every oh, year, wow. and so we've got this huge pottery um, yard that you can shop in. A uh, lot of granite, uh, Japanese lanterns, um, basins, benches, things like that, and uh, all kinds of garden decor yeah. and giftware. Type Everything of things. you need to decorate your, your yard and your garden. Right. Um, do you guys do events at the Garden Center? Do you have any upcoming events? Uh, just about every Saturday in the spring we have a, uh, a workshop. Um, the upcoming workshops uh, this coming Saturday uh, we'll be discussing new plants. They're usually like 45 minutes or so um, where we show you all the new plants uh, that are just out this year. Um, the next one is uh, a, uh, a container 
uh, kids workshop for where they can make a container plant for their mother for Mother's Day. Very neat. I think the following Saturday is an arboretum walk where uh, my son Dave and I walk you through the arboretum and point out some of the really neat trees and things. But there's one every uh, uh, every weekend up through, and then uh, open house is usually with you know we started with that open house back yeah. uh, 30 years ago. And we've held an open house ever since. We call it Open House and Hosta Walk. And that's June 8th, 9th, and 10th. That's when the hostas are looking fantastic yeah. in the Hosta Ravine, uh, the display area where we have lots of hostas planted. And uh, we have plants on sale and Very give cool. away cookies and lemonade. So that's a big event coming up. Very neat. Uh, I know you guys just um, expanded and opened a new venue called The Barn. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, we often had people asking if they could get married out there oh, yeah, because sure. of the gardens and everything, but we had no real backup plan in case of rain. Mm -hmm. So we uh, got to thinking, well, let's build a, uh, a, a shelter house. So at least they got a backup plan. Yeah. And then we thought, well, if they want to do a reception, we don't want, uh, I live right there on the property, so I don't, right. <laughs> I don't want uh, uh, to listen to a, a DJ or a band every Saturday night. Uh -huh. So we decided, well, it needs to be an enclosed building, and it just sort of mushroomed into this large uh, building called the barn, where we have uh, it's rustic on the outside, uh, chic, shall we say, on the yeah, inside. Very cool. Uh, and it's big enough to handle 350 people. Wow. We have a bride's room and a groom's room, a large kitchen that the caterers love, and then we finally got the office moved out of my house and yeah, up there. Yeah, that's so fantastic. You guys thought of everything there. That started in uh, 2015, so this is our fourth year um, having an event center. Very cool. What other kind of events can you guys host there? Obviously weddings, but... Weddings are the big the thing. Oh, yeah. And uh, every weekend from this point uh, into November, uh, there's one or two or three weddings. Wow. But we also do, uh, you know, host, for example, bank uh, uh, shareholder meetings. Okay. Um, we have the uh, high school, local high school has uh, madrigals in uh, early December. Very cool. And so they come out and practice every night and then have a, a Saturday and a Sunday performance. Awesome. Um, other community events, I think United Way had a, a big uh, fundraising uh, gala there mm -hmm. one night. So things like that over the winter months. Very cool. So speaking of the winter months, does Hornbaker, are you guys still open throughout the winter months? Well, or? the gardens are not. Okay. We're just open uh, for six months, April 10th, okay. through, April 10th through October 10th every year. Um, but then, of course, the barn is open uh, okay. year round. Okay. Um, and so if people want to learn more about Hornbaker, you guys have a newsletter. How can people, how can people find out about that? Or get well, you can go to our it? website, hornbakergardens.com, and uh, click on newsletters, and then there's a place to enter your email address. And we send out maybe f about six mailings a year okay. uh, just to let people know what's new, what's coming up, uh, events that are happening, that kind of thing. One event that I didn't mention that's coming up in September, not till September, um, I think it's September 15th, is the Artisan Market. Oh. Which uh, this is our sixth annual Artisan Market. Um, it's a juried artist uh, Artisan Market. Wow. Uh, with some really fine art. And there's also food vendors and uh, um, there's ice cream and all kinds of all things. All the good stuff. Uh, so that's a real fun event. Very cool. In, is this the September. first time you've had it or is this a repeat? This will be the sixth. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, we started that uh, five years ago. So uh, that has really mushroomed into a, a really fun event. People yeah. come and walk around the gardens, um, shop for some really nice art. It's a lot of fun. Very cool. So, and you've been gardening seriously for a long time. So what is your favorite plant? Is it still the hostas? Well, it's pretty hard, <laughs> hard to beat hostas. Yeah. Uh, although I hang out more in the uh, tree and shrub area. Yeah. Um, I, I really enjoy um, interesting trees and educating people about trees. Um, I think that's an area where people don't know as much. Mm -hmm. um, they learn fairly quickly about hostas and other perennials. Um, but a lot of people don't realize what a wide variety of trees and shrubs are available and are hardy in this area. So uh, I often take people on a golf cart ride yeah. and drive them around. Uh, you know, we're on 40 acres. Oh so 
um, the plantings are scattered yeah. and uh, we can walk around quite a bit, but uh, I can take them on a golf cart ride, show them, you know, 20 year old beech trees and things like that that they're not familiar with. Very cool. So if people aren't familiar with the area, um, if they go up to Hornbaker for the day, what else can they do in Princeton? Well, Princeton has a lot to offer. Um, historically, uh, it's an old town that a lot of uh, big older houses were built in the 1800s and early 1900s. So it's a real pretty town. Um, there's uh, a good developing art scene in Princeton. Festival 56 mm, yeah. is uh, uh, summer stock theater it runs from late June uh, through July. They do five or six performances, uh, including uh, a free Shakespeare in the Park. Very cool. Uh, that's a lot of fun. Uh, Princeton Coffee House brings in uh, some of the best um, uh, folk musicians uh, from across the country. Uh, Prairie Art Center has an uh, art uh, art display of different artists on a monthly basis. Even Princeton Public Library brings in uh, some really interesting wide, a wide variety of artists of all kinds. And then the Chamber, uh, Chamber of Commerce, Princeton Chamber of Commerce, started a Music on Main program cool. here just a couple of years ago. And uh, this year I think they have five really uh, good bands coming in. They block off a, a two-block section of Main Street and the uh, restaurants in town uh, have booths and sell awesome. uh, food and that kind of thing. Very so cool. quite a bit of art scene, plenty of shopping. Uh, one of the main uh, shopping attractions that's been there for decades uh, in Princeton is Patterns of the Past. Yep, Hoff Hoffman's. Hoffman's yeah. Patterns of the Past. Um, they've got about every kind of uh, pattern uh, of china mm -hmm. that your gra you know if your grandma oh, is yeah. uh, missing uh, a piece out of her china uh, you can find uh, the replacement there i'm sure but uh, so there's antique uh, antique shops a quilt shop and princeton i think is in enjoying a real renaissance uh, a lot of younger people have opened up new shops there uh, dress shops gift shops uh, home decor, mm -hmm. uh, so quite a few new shops, uh, new restaurants. There's a really nice uh, coffee shop called Flower House up on the north end. Princeton actually has two business districts that developed because when the railroad went through, mm -hmm. a, a different business district district developed. Now there's two business districts, and uh, the north end calls itself the Art District. Okay. Uh, a lot nice. of really interesting shops there in well, Princeton. Cool. Well, that's fantastic. So, yeah, you can definitely make a day of it if you want to head over to Hornbaker's, then go to the flower shop, keep in theme, get some coffee there. Absolutely. And enjoy some of the shops. Well, fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us, Rich. We appreciate it. Sure. And if you want to learn more about the gardens, you can head over to their website, hornbakergardens.com. Stay tuned. More happy half hours on the way. Get out your calendars because we're about to fill your free time. Did you know you could do trivia in the Peoria area pretty much any night of the week if you wanted to? Get a group together of your smartest friends or maybe just the ones with the most useless knowledge in their heads and check out one of the great trivia nights in the area. You can play Monday night at Brasky's, Tuesday at MD's Sports Bar and Grill, Wednesday at Poor Brothers Tap Room, and Thursday at the Fox Pub. Peoria Players Theater presents the award-winning musical Mamma Mia, May 4th through the 13th. Based on songs by music group ABBA, Mamma Mia tells a hilarious story of a teen search for her birth father on a Greek island paradise. Head on over to the Peoria Players website for ticket information. Want to help beautify Pekin? Then take part in Pick Up Pekin, a community cleanup day May 5th. Join volunteers to help beautify historic downtown Pekin by sweeping streets, pulling weeds, planting flowers, and picking up litter. Head over to the Pekin Chamber of Commerce website for more information. Concerts in the Courtyard returns to Heritage Square in 2018 with a schedule full of amazing shows. This year's series kicks off with Magic Giant May 5th. Enjoy the live music and great beer from Poor Brothers Craft Tap Room. Looking for more fun events? Head on over to our website, enjoypeoria.com, or visit us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Enjoy Peoria. Welcome back to Happy Half Hour. Well, the craft beer craze in, Peor in the Peoria area has really taken off. In the last few years, you've seen a number of new microbreweries, including this one, the one that we're at here today, Bearded Al Brewing in Peoria's Warehouse District. To talk more about Bearded Al and, and what it is, is owner and head beer master, 
brewmaster, Nick Babcock. Nick, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you. Um, first question, uh, you guys have been open since the beginning of the year. You said January 20th. How's it been so far? Uh, so far, so good. We've had a great response from, uh, from our, our public, uh, from the community. Um, we, we had a, a fundable campaign that we ran, and we've had some VIP people come in and, and, and join as a, we call it the Parliament Club. Um, great response from those folks as well, and um, yeah, everything's been going really well. You know, for those who may not be in, in Peoria, the Peoria area, what is uh, Bearded Owl? Bearded Owl is a brewery um, slash brew pub. Um, so we, we offer our own beer. We offer some, some guest taps uh, um, from some other breweries. And uh, we're also ramping up and getting ready to do some food. So, so what, what kind of beer do you guys brew? We brew all kinds of beers. Uh, we, we, have, we try not to set any limitations on the beers that we do. We like to experiment. Um, that being said, we do some traditional styles as well. Um, we have a, a pretty good Hefeweizen. Um, we do a, a you know, Saison, uh, several stouts, IPAs. I mean, you, you name it, we'll, we'll probably try it at least once. For, for those who, who don't really know the brew process, how long does it take for you guys to, because you guys change these out pretty, pretty, pretty often. How, how long does it take to get a, a batch going? Um, it depends on the batch and the style of beer. Typically, I'd say between three and four weeks. Um, some are a little bit earlier than that, but... Um, you know, it's a good six-hour, seven-hour brew day, and then it needs to ferment for a couple weeks, and you have to, to carbonate it and all that, and, you know, keg it, all that fun stuff. So it's, it's about a three-week process, give or take. How do you guys, how do you guys determine how much, how much you brew based off of demand and, and supply? Um, pretty easily. When we have a fermenter that's empty, we make more. <laughs> if we want to crank out as much beer as we can, I mean, that's, you know, that's what we're all about. So as soon as we have the opportunity to, to make something different, we'll go ahead and do it. Easy, easy enough. Um, uh, you mentioned that you are building a kitchen. Um, I know it's something that you wanted to do from the get-go, but you guys wanted to get open. Um, kind of talk about that and, and what you guys plan on offering. Sure. I mean, well, first and foremost, you know, the focus of this place is beer. Uh, we're about the beer. We want to continue to be about the beer. But at the same time, we want to be able to offer our, our, our patrons, um, you know, something to eat, something to, uh, so they don't have to leave if, they want, if they're enjoying a beer. You know, go across the street to Time or go next door to Kelleher's or Tannins and Hops, all the other great businesses that are down in the warehouse district. Um, we want to be able to give them something small, not a huge menu, but something small to where they can stay here and uh, not have to get up. Um, so, you know, we're looking at small, we're looking at simple. I don't know if you've been in the back yet, but our space is not huge, so um, we're not going to be a, a full service, you know, uh, restaurant type of thing, but uh, just want to offer something that's done, done well and done simply uh, for, for everybody. And that seems like that, that's pretty much a standard for a lot of places that, that are a lot like Bearded Owl. You know, the smaller, easier that you can sit down, have a drink, and, and have a little food while you're here. That's exactly what we're going for, yeah. And Nick, you were telling me a little bit, you know, not just the, the addition of the kitchen, but you also are adding uh, a patio. Yeah. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, sure. I mean, the patio's always been there, but we're, we're working on um, getting it open, getting it, you know, fitted with chairs, tables, all that good stuff. Um, if only the weather, you know, would cooperate, we could have it open already. So we did open it one day last week. It was great. It was 70 degrees. Um, but, yeah, we're, we're excited about having that. Um, it will lead out to the street back there um, when, when the street closes down, when Water Street closes down this summer. And um, so it's just a great place to sit outside and, and enjoy, enjoy a good beer and, and, uh, and enjoy the outside scenery. And we're here with, with Nick Babcock, the owner and head brewmaster of Bearded Owl. So when you guys decided to, to start this place, why did you choose the warehouse district in Peoria? Um, several reasons. I mean, the location is, is phenomenal for what we were trying to do. Um, we love the foot traffic down here. We love how they close off the street on the weekends. Um, so just surely from a, you know, from a, uh, foot traffic perspective, it's, it was number one on our list. And then we like what's going on down here as well. I mean, you got a lot of new businesses that opening up. Um, there's a lot of other craft places down here. You know, I've mentioned some of the other businesses. You've got 8-Bit next door. You've got Time, Tannen, Kelleher's, Rodell's is down here. Um, we want to be part of the community that's building up and, and you know, a, a really become a place where you can bounce around and go to different places. And most of them have craft beer at the top of their list, so. The microbrewery concept um, has really taken off, you know, not just in, in the Peoria area, but, but in the United States. If I, I'm, I'm reading this, I think currently there's around 7,000 breweries in the U.S. and now pretty much all of them are, you know, minus like the big places are, are microbreweries. Um, you know, what makes, these microbreweries and, and just craft beer in general so popular? Uh, I think people are looking for something different and, and, and a lot of times it's, um, you know, craft breweries tend to feature local ingredients or, 
you know, a local atmosphere, and I think that's what draws people. Um, people are getting tired of the macro, you know, the macro produced, uh, you know, not only beer, but just anything. And I, you know, you're always looking for something new, something local, something that's unique and not a, you know, a chain or something like that. When you have people coming in here that may not try craft beer, um, that are, that, you know, they had their comfort zone and, you know, that comfort zone is those macro beers. How do you kind of get them to, to sway and try something? Well, the good thing is they're in here um, and, and we know that. And we have a couple beers that we feel can, you know, somewhat replace those, those lighter beers that they're used to. So we'll make recommendations. We'll try to talk to them and say, hey, you know, well, if you like this, you might like this. Why don't you try this? That kind of thing. So, um, you know, we, we definitely don't want to alienate those consumers. Um, and we try to work with them and get them something they want. Um, and, and especially, you know, specifically in Peoria, how have you seen the, the microbrewery sensation take off? Because, I mean, there's been a, a few that have been popping up here, you know, in the last couple of years. It, it seems like it's really starting to, to, to gain some steam. Yeah, I mean, we usually we're, you know, we're not always on the forefront of a boom like that. But um, I think what's happening in, in, in town is really great. You know, you've got industry just popped up up north. Um, you know, Rodell's has been here for 20 years. Um, Obed and Isaacs. Um, I think I'm missing one, aren't I? Maybe not. But yeah, you know, it's great. I mean, I think even this city could could support one or two more. Um, you know, you look at towns like Asheville, North Carolina, or Portland, Oregon. They're not huge, um, but they've got. I mean, they've got breweries on every street corner. So, um, you know, I think what's happening is great, and uh, I'd like to see uh, like to see that whole craft beer scene continue to evolve. Um, so, so for people that are, you know, that see this or, or, or have heard word of mouth about, about Bearded Out, um, you know, how, how, how can people get more information? Um, well, right now the best place to go is our Facebook page. We don't have a website yet, although it is in the works. Um, that, that's coming as well. Um, so Facebook, um, if you're not on social media, we, we're hopefully listed. Um, we have a phone number. Um, or the best thing to do is just pop in and, uh, and have a beer and talk to us. And what's your address? 112 State Street, um, right in the corner of State and Water. Perfect. Excellent. Um, and, and then if people, you know, want to see what you guys have on tap, Facebook, is that where? Facebook, um, we uh, utilize an app, an app called Untapped. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but uh, a lot of people who drink craft beer are familiar with it. So venue's listed there. It's on Facebook. Yep. Excellent. Well, well, Nick, thank you so much for joining us. And, and again, if you're looking, you know, for some more information, if you want to come out to Bearded Owl or, or like uh, Nick said, um, want to check out what they have um, on tap, um, head to their Facebook page or, or go download the app Untapped. Stay tuned. More Happy Half Hours next. Hi, I'm Pat Robinson with Mojo Southern Kitchen. Today we're preparing for you one of our signature dishes, the shrimp and grits. Hope you enjoy. Let's go for a bike ride. Check out City Cycle, the Peoria area's bike share program, brought to you by Enjoy Peoria and powered by Zagster. City Cycle has bike stations located in six different spots. <coughs> Membership is super affordable, and riding the bikes is so easy. All you do is download the Zagster app, choose your bike, unlock, ride, and return okay. to any of the stations. Want to try it out? Visit Ride City Cycle on Facebook for more. Well, Casey, there's a lot of fun stuff going on there this weekend. Is. First off, May 5th is Cinco de Mayo on Saturday. So there, I know there's a lot of a lot of our partners are having some, some cool parties going on. I yeah. know Los Cabos has their They're big like party. Straight shut down the parking yeah. lot. They have a mechanical bowl and mariachi, and it's pretty intense. Awesome they drink take, and they food take specials. it seriously. Yeah. Um, it's always fun. The it last is. few years I've gone, it's 
always fun. I worked it last year, actually, as a volunteer. Oh, yeah, and, I remember. Oh my gosh, yeah, you were running around. You were having a blast. Though. That's it like, was, and now I feel, like, I feel like I can go get my own chips and salsa when I go are there you, now. Are you hoping out I'm again pretty this much, year? No, I've got a wedding. Oh. Plus, I know. I know. Okay. It'll be fun. That's Less okay. work. Um, there's also, I know we're not in Louisville for the Kentucky Derby, but I know a lot of our partners are having Kentucky Derby parties, yes. cannons and hops, um, Sweet Fire Bar and Grill. Um, are you going to go get a mint julep? I may get a mint julep. I'm not wearing one of the hats. I'm not, not a big hat. I'm not a big. My, my fiance, she loves those big off. hats, and I'm like, I couldn't do that. Now, like, well, obviously, I, but like, I, I'd be cool with wearing like they always. The guys always have the weird, like funny, colorful, the very colorful ties and shirts, and that's kind of up my alley. I yeah, think I'd be, you're a very I'd have Andrew's a very that. colorful sock guy. Yeah, so I feel like that translates well, pretty well. Yeah. I think these would be perfect. What do we have on? You can't really see them, but oh, yeah, little they got colorful, speckled flowers. I like it. I'm surprised that that. You're not just staking out on Water Street for next week because Mardi Gras in May is next week, and that's like your it's that's upon your us. that's that's your baby. That's like that's your that's your pride and joy. It's upon us. We we did a little walk last night to see to just you know reacquaint ourselves with the street and see yeah. what it is and what it's going to become. And you, you think they'd be like, oh, it's easy because there's only a few blocks, but like you have to picture everything, yeah. like all the decorations where every everyone's going. Everyone's going to go. The, all the vendors the and where the power is, where the music's going to be. It's going to be. It's such a cool event. It's, it's so cool to see Water Street. I mean, really, it does. It transforms into Bourbon Street yeah. for the day. There's just music and entertainment and art and just weird and wonderful stuff everywhere. I just think it's fun to see so many people down there like if you're looking from one side of water street and looking down uh -huh. it just looks like it's it's packed like yeah. sardines this, uh, the people walking around and and from everyone you know i've always had a blast the last two years um uh but like just talking to people and they're like oh my gosh this is so cool like they need we need we need more mm -hmm. festivals like this like it's just so easy going it's so relaxed but there's so much going on at the same time i know it's cool well it's cool that it's free i think that's one of the best things about the festival is that people everybody can come down and enjoy it and not have to worry about are we going to have to pay to see if we even want to stay here they can come down and then of course they'll want to stay there because it's awesome yeah there's amazing food i'm excited for the food mm -hmm. speaking of food actually we skipped this weekend wing fest Ooh, wing fest. fest. Is yes, that's so. What are you? What's your What's your favorite wing in the? Career? I think my favorite one is rum burgers. I'm rum a burgers? big fan of rum burgers. It I'm just you could you could tell burgers. it's like they put a lot of a lot of heart and joy in, in, into those. What's into your those. What's your go to sauce? Oh jeez, I'm not sure. I don't think think it's from rum burgers, but I'm a big jerk sauce fan. Yeah, they've got a good jerk. Okay. Um, I love their what's it called? The Turner. It's like okay. a creamy like mild or like hot ranch mm -hmm. very interesting okay delightful you oh. know who else has good wings it's kind of random pecan quarries they do it's different than the peoria quarries oh. they do um it's like oven seared and so they're just like a little crispy kind of like a little burnt okay. taste to them but see i've perfect. had the peoria ones i've never had yeah, the, the, totally the different. pecan ones okay cool. it's weird yeah. but go to wing fest and you can try all the wings awesome. in the area cool yeah excellent i know all right well actually I think that's all the time we have yeah. for this week's episode of Happy Half Hour. Time really does fly when you're having fun and talking about food. Um, remember, if you're ever looking for a new restaurant to try, a cool attraction, or a great event, check us out on our website, enjoypuria.com, or follow us on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. Yeah. And yeah. remember, Andrew, like my mom always says, if you're bored, it's because you're boring. So <laughs> get out there and enjoy Peoria. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. PeoriaLife.com